kids, I'm sure you have learned a lot from last week's segment on Catholic education in Singapore, as much as I have. It is amazing how Catholic education has helped so many in the last 168 years. We are so glad that you have continued to share your artwork with us. Thank you for your dedication in posting your artwork week after week. Thank you, Adil, for reminding us that meek is not weak, and Jaden Emmanuel that to be meek is to have strength under control. We are constantly amazed at how inspiring your sharings are. Do keep them coming. In the last episode, we shared with you about the third beatitude. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. When we are meek, we are gentle and calm, and we show others that Jesus is our strength. This week, we are going to share with you another beatitude. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Before we find out what this means, let's begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. Now let's bless ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, you taught us the way to live and love in the Beatitudes. Holy Spirit, open our minds and our hearts to listen to what God wants of us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, children, let's get on our feet and sing of God's love that is big, great, and strong.
welcome back. In this next part, we will be learning about how the Beatitudes guide us in our daily life. Here's a story on overcoming our struggles. Hi, Uncle Mark. Hey, hi, Sabine. How was class today with John? Well, these cupcakes are for John. I wanted to thank him for standing up for me today. Oh, why? What happened? During the test, I dropped my eraser and I tried to pick it up. But the teacher said I was cheating. I told her I wasn't, but she didn't believe me. Didn't anyone tell the teacher that you were just picking up the eraser? No one did. Everyone was silent for a long time. I wanted to cry. Then, John stood up and told her he saw me drop the eraser. I'm glad he did. Yep, I'm glad he did too. Hey, John. I heard from Dad how you stood up for Sabine and did the right thing. That's really good of you. What's wrong? I didn't really want to at first, but I knew Sabine wasn't cheating. Have you been in an uncomfortable situation like John before? Did you feel that it was really hard to speak up for what you think is bad or wrong? Now put yourself in John's shoes. What would you have done? Would you keep quiet because you think it doesn't concern you? Talk to Sabine later and try to comfort her. Decide to speak up even if it makes you uncomfortable. It is tough to decide what to do if you were John, isn't it? Would you have done what he did? Think about it. So what happened, John? Why did you eventually speak up? I remember you once told me about the Beatitude. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And they will be filled. But I also remembered that you didn't quite understand it then. I do now. I really didn't want to say anything to the teacher, but I felt really uneasy. Mm, but you spoke up for Sabine and told the teacher the truth, right? That's the Holy Spirit giving you the courage to do the right thing. And that's righteousness. It felt really good to help someone. And it got me cupcakes too.
Do you remember a time when you were very hungry or very thirsty? It can feel unbearable and you need something to fill you up or quench your thirst. When you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you feel the same way. You feel uneasy when you see wrong and desire to do the right thing. What John did took a lot of courage. The Holy Spirit gave him that courage to stand up for the truth and to be right before God. That filled him up and made him happy. Let us now listen to the story of a saint on how he inspires all of us to be righteous. St. John Baptist de la Salle was from a wealthy family. He loved the saint stories his grandma told him. He wanted to be just like them, holy and righteous. One day, he visited a prisoner. The prisoner's clothes were dirty and tattered. He felt sorry for him. He hugged the prisoner and joyfully exchanged clothes with him. John Baptist de la Salle also gave up his wealth to feed the poor. He was determined to provide education for the poor children. John Baptist de la Salle trained teachers to teach. Some were uneducated and treated the children badly at first. But he welcomed them into his home, gave them food and a place to stay. The teachers also found new ways to reach out to the students. Soon, God sent more teachers. He faced some challenges but persevered on. They formed the Brothers of the Christian Schools, or De La Salle Brothers. The brothers devote their lives to praying, teaching and learning. De La Salle schools are in more than 80 countries today. St. John Baptist De La Salle was a role model for all teachers and everyone as he always set out to seek the last, the lost and the least. There is certainly so much to learn from him. For this week's activity, don't forget to access the Padlet link and share your works with us. We can't wait to see them. Now don't forget to share with us one thing that you have learned today. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag CatholicMarsAtHome. Recently, we celebrated the ordination of four new priests. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us about the rite of ordination. The whole church in Singapore rejoiced this week when Archbishop William Goh ordained four young men as priests. From the dawn of creation, God has called men to serve their community as priests. They offered sacrifice to God and led the people in worship. God gives Catholic priests the power to forgive sins and to turn the bread and wine at Mass into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. In the rite of ordination, the man lies on the floor while the church asks God and the saints to help him be a good and holy priest. He makes himself small to show that God is great. Then the bishop calls down the Holy Spirit upon the man and says the prayer of ordination. It may look like nothing has happened, but the man has been changed inside, given the power to act in the place of Christ to lead and sanctify our church. And so we now call him Father. Thank you, Auntie Estella, for sharing with us about the rite of ordination. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, Take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about the Beatitudes. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on this 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, 20th September, 2020. We offer up this Mass for all children that they may be generous to all they encounter, just as the Lord loves us so generously. 
join us in singing the processional hymn. All people that on earth do dwell. A warm welcome to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, especially for our young people today who are joining us in this Mass. Today we celebrate the 25th Ordinary Sunday. We want to lift up all the intentions, especially all of you young people who are joining me at this moment from wherever you are, to join me in this Mass, and we want to thank God for the gift of each one of you. And we thank God in this Mass, and together, we all the people of God as one family, we offer up all our thanksgiving to God in this Mass. So we begin this celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Glory to God in the highest And on our peace To people of goodwill We praise you We bless you We adore you We glorify you We give you Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. And never. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way. The evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth, as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is close to all who call Him. The Lord is close to all who call Him. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. The Lord is great. cannot be measured. The Lord is close to all who call Him. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to Sweet.
A reading from the first letter of Saint Paul to the Philippians. Christ will be glorified in my body, whether by my life or by my death. Life to me, of course, is Christ, but then death would bring me something more. But then again, if living in this body means doing work, which is having good results. I do not know what I should choose. I am caught in this dilemma. I want to be gone and be with Christ, which would be very much the better. But for me to stay alive in this body is a more urgent need for your sake. Avoid anything in your everyday lives that would be unworthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, "The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak." To hire workers for his vineyard, he made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day, and sent them. Going out at about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, "You go to my vineyard too, and I will give you a fair wage." So they went. At about six, the sixth hour, and again at about the ninth hour, he went out and did the same. Then, at about the eleventh hour, he went out and found more men standing round, and he said to them, "Why have you been standing here idle all day? Because no one has hired us." They answered. He said to them. You go into my vineyard too. In the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his bailiff, "Call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first." So those who were hired at about the eleventh hour came forward and received one denarius each. But they too received one denarius each. They took it, but grumbled at the land owner, the man who came last. They said, "Have done only one hour, and you have treated them the same as us, though we have done a heavy day's work in all the heat." He answered one of them and said. My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do what I like with my own? Why be envious? Because I am generous. Thus, the last will be first, and the first 
last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear young people in Christ, Happy Children's Day in advance. Although we are celebrating Children's Day in two weeks' time from now, but I just want to wish you all in advance. Let me share with you a story I heard recently. There was a boy, let's call him Nemo. Nemo was doing extremely well in all his exams. However, there was something different about Nemo. How so? Well, even though Nemo was the top in his school, he did not go around boasting and showing off his high marks. Instead, guess what Nemo did. Do you want to make a guess? One day during recess, Nemo quietly went to the staff room to look for his teacher. And he said like this, Hi, Mr. Tan. Can I please share and give some of my marks to my classmates who did not do well for their final exam? Please don't tell them. Huh? I saw them studying hard, but they did not get good results. Nemo had always been good at studying, and he felt sorry for his classmates who spent more time than him studying and yet still did badly for their exams. Even though his teacher cannot grant Nemo his wish, what can you say about Nemo? Nemo is a small boy with a big heart, right? You must be wondering, where did Nemo learn this kindness and generosity from? Perhaps you might have encountered this kind of friend in your schools or wherever you went before that somehow show you a kind of generosity and kindness towards you. Maybe not trying to share exam results with, with you, but any other forms of generosity and kindness. The good news is, I also see a great potential in each one of you to have that glowing heart with kindness and generosity. Okay, my dear young people, that said, I must admit that not everyone can be as kind and generous just as Nemo, right? At times when we see other people doing better than us, we will start saying maybe nasty or hurtful things to them, or probably we dislike them, especially when we start comparing ourselves with them. We feel like we are a loser. Think about this. We feel ashamed and we grumble and we say, life is so unfair. But do you really know how they feel, those people who are doing well in their studies or in other things? What would they feel when they do better than you? Perhaps they may look happy, but that might not be their true feeling. Do you know that maybe they also might be feeling sad, lonely, and helpless? Is life unfair to you? Some of you think, might think so sometimes because people have high hopes or expectations of you. You work hard, you sacrifice your playtime to study, but in the end, your results might not be as good as what you or your parents had hoped for. And it hurts when your friends score better and it seems like they receive more praise 
and attention. You might feel even you might feel even more hurt when people around you start to nag at you. These people could be your mummy or daddy, your teachers or your uncles and aunties, so on and so forth. They have so much high hopes for you. You might be be familiar with these nagging words. Go and study. Why are your exam results so bad? You are just wasting our money. Do your homework. Stop playing games or oh, TikTok. Why can't you be like your Coco or your Cheche, who scored much better than you? You might be exploding inside you. Dear young people, do you feel helpless and suffocated? Do you feel sad, angry, lonely, or jealous when you are being compared? Do you feel stressed because of their expectations? Do you feel like no one likes you or appreciates you? And you will ask yourself, why must I be generous and kind while others are having a better life than me? Again, you might say to yourself, life is so unfair. Actually, all of us we do not like to be treated unfairly and rightly so no one should be treated unfairly correct in our world there are many people who will be unfair to us and to others and it is not right to be unfair to anyone because it can cause a lot of suffering right you don't like that feeling However, whenever you feel that you are treated unfairly, I hope you will take a moment, step back, and reflect. Why am I reacting? Because naturally, human nature, we will get angry when we feel there is a kind of injustice being done to us. We feel so unfair. But let us look what Jesus has to say to us today. About being treated unfairly, against how God lavish on us His generosity. Maybe we, the way we look at things being done to us, it is unfair to us. But God has a different take on that. Maybe He is trying to shift our mindset from the experience of being treated unfairly to. The realm of looking at his generosity, how he treat us fairly. Let us look at the gospel story today. It is about the land owner of a vineyard who hired workers to work in his vineyard. Remember, the first group of workers were also experiencing some form of unfairness. They grumbled and they complained. They said, "Why are we paid the same amount as the last group of hired workers? This is so unfair." But what did the land owner say to them? Why be envious just because I am generous? Wow, what a shocking answer, right? Yes, in life, we can never stop other people from being unfair to us. We can complain and complain, but there is something that God wants all of us to realize today. Whenever we face unfairness, it is not telling ourselves that there is nothing wrong for them to treat us unfairly. No, we don't condone any form of unfairness. But God is inviting us to look at how we respond. Positively, after being treated unfairly, because this is not easy to some, but it is to free each one of you, all of us, from getting more bitter in our life today. 
Of course, all of us, all of you, you don't want to end up being a bitter or angry bird, right? What about the workers who complain so much about their wages? God wants us to realize that we must learn from Him and be generous like Him. Although it is not 100% perfect to be generous as God, but He con invites us to consider what it means to be generous so that we can live our life happily. In this Gospel reading, it does not matter who came first or who came last. For God, everyone who serves God will be rewarded equally. There is no favoritism at all. God loves all of us, all of you, my dear young people. Yes, each and every one of us. He will never leave anyone behind, even if we are lost and return to Him at the very last hour. God still loves us and welcomes us. Do you believe in that, my dear young people? Do you believe God loves you? To God, what matters the most is not producing excellent results. But God looks at our hearts, our sincerity, our efforts, our work in making this world a better place. Not just for us, but for everybody. God sees our hard work and He blesses us. This is how God is generous and being fair to us. It's simply a pure gift from Him. This is also how we must learn to be generous to one another and, net, and not try to compare on com and complain about the reward or blessings we get when we serve God. Let's go back to the story of Nemo. Nemo was so generous, a young boy who was so generous to share his good grades with his classmates. Just like Nemo, God himself also shares his generosity with each of you, beloved young people of God. God's generosity and love for you is not just based on your good grades or your looks or what you have. He sees the beautiful person within each of you. I really hope that you will discover these gifts and talents which are already inside you today and be someone who is kind, generous, and humble. Be a person who will share your gifts and good things with others without expecting any reward in return. It is not just about schools and exams. Everything we learn in school is to help us become a better person and make this world a better place. We don't study hard just because we are able to control other people and make them suffer. Remember this. Life is not only about me, myself, and I. Some of us always think only about ourselves and see others as a threat, as someone who is there to harm us. Remember once again, my dear young people, don't let that beautiful person inside you disappear. Invite God to journey with you, even at this young age, and all of you who are journeying together in Christ. And never forget that God loves all of you, all the time, no matter what. This is God's generosity towards you. And he invites you to do the same to others. Amen.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, knowing that the Lord is near to all who call upon Him, let us confidently pray for ourselves and for our world. Our response is, Lord graciously hear us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William, all priests and clergy, that they may provide us examples of servant leadership, justice and kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord graciously hear us. For world leaders, those in public office and positions of influence, that God, whose thoughts are far above those men, will guide their minds and hearts towards decisions and actions that support life, justice, morality, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For the public safety and the well-being of all health care and relief workers in the front line of the pandemic, hurricanes, floods, and wildfires, that God will protect them from harm, give them strength to carry out their duties and help them support and give hope to those in crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who labor, that they may receive a fair wage in a safe work environment, and for the unemployed, that they may quickly find work that will sustain them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For our personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty and living God, your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts. Grant us what we truly need and help us to love tenderly, act justly, and walk humbly before you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with, with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, especially our young people, although all of you are not able to receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist at this moment, but take this moment to allow yourself to invite him to enter into your heart and to receive him spiritually and to ask him and unite him your longing and desire to be close to him take this moment a quiet moment to envision yourself being one with christ receiving him and helping you uplifting you in whatever concerns that you have in your heart. And may this spiritual communion will help you to feel God's love and generosity in your heart. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So today we learn a great message from the gospel, which is to learn about God's generosity. And if there is one person whom we can recognize where this God's generosity is being practiced in, in this person's life, that person is none other than our Blessed Mother herself. She is our great example, our spiritual mother, who has really practiced generosity in allowing God's salvation to come to us in Christ by saying yes to God's plan to us. So let us continue to ask Mother Mary to pray for all of us, and especially for you, my dear young people, that she will accompany you, journey with you in your ups and downs in your life. So we thank you for joining us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless all of you, Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a time of adjustment and embracing of change. In our society, work, relationships, and in the way we practice our faith. We had to adapt. We stayed mostly at home. We prayed where and when we could. We went online for our masses, for spiritual communion, to watch and listen to our shepherds preach and share their love with us, and to partake in the many events and programs the church had put online. It was an opportunity for us as a church to reflect on our vulnerabilities and to respond to challenges. 
To meet the needs of the new normal, we need to build on the digitization of our church. Not just in online masses and a registration system for mass resumption, but across the archdiocese and the parishes in the conduct of the many programs. In catechesis, in building community life, in growing strong families, in empowering our youth and leaders, and spreading the saving love of our Lord Jesus Christ. More than just digitization, the many existing archdiocese and organizations and new organizations such as the Catholic Leadership Center, Catholic Preschool Education and projects like the Catholic Hub need to take on new initiatives as they adjust to ensure that the church stays relevant in the new normal. In 2021, let us approach the 200th anniversary of the Catholic Church in Singapore with a new mindset. Let us reflect on the many sacrifices that have come before us. Let us not only celebrate our past, but let us mobilize for the present and build for the next generation. This season calls for all of us to be open to change, alternatives and innovation. And as one people, seek to build new capacity and capabilities to continue to pass on the light that Christ has given to us. Freely we have received, freely give. Let us give of our time, treasures and talents to build a vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church. To build our church today for tomorrow. Visit catholicfoundation.sg Be a giver.